Hey, yo, what up, my friends? Good morning, and God bless you, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ. I was watching that sun come up. I've been observing the Enoch calendar. Okay, I stand in the same spot. Okay, I stand right there. And right there. And I watch that sun come up. And I've been observing what it does as time goes by. Okay, and from spring, we've watched it move all the way up. It moves this way, okay, to the summer solstice. That was Father's Day, Pagan Father's Day. And then it comes back, okay, it'll come to the fall equinox, okay, the autumnal equinox. And then it'll keep going to the winter solstice, come back to the spring equinox, and then repeat itself. I've been observing the Enoch calendar, okay? Biblically, it's the Bible calendar, my friends. It's the only calendar that matches the calendar in the Bible. And that's kind of what I wanted to share with you real quick. And I'll just show you a couple... I encourage you to study this. Amen. But you'll see in Genesis, we're given a calendar, okay, as to the flood here. Okay, because it says, okay, of course, he gives Noah the commandment to build the ark, right? And uh, he tells him to take two and two of the unclean animals, okay, and he says take seven uh, takes seven of the clean animals and he gets them ready okay he gets everything ready on the ark but then over here okay in verse 11 it says in the 600th year of Noah his life in the second month okay the second month the 17th day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Okay, the flood kicked off. Okay, and the rain was on the on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, but then it makes it perfectly clear. Okay, that's how long the water does its thing. Okay, but it perfectly makes it clear that he's on the ark for months. Okay, because it says... And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Okay. And it tells us here. And when the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated. Okay. So a hundred and fifty days the ark is floating around. And then it says in verse 4 here, of chapter 8, it says, And the ark rested in the seventeenth, or I mean in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day. Okay? We know in the second month, on the same day, the seventeenth day, okay, the waters opened. Okay? Perfect. Five months later, okay, five months later, on the same day of the month, the the ark rested okay that's five months okay and my friends the only way you can correctly have a hundred and fifty days perfectly okay have a hundred and fifty days perfectly with five months is with the Enoch calendar okay the Jewish calendar the Hebrew calendar the uh, lunar calendar okay they're all wrong Okay, they don't fall in order. Some of them, you know, they lose the Sabbath, or it's just completely whack. If you study these things out, you'll see that the Enoch calendar, my friend, is the only calendar that has order. It's the only calendar that has 150 days within a five-month period. Okay, and the only way you can have that is in a 360-day prophetic year. Okay. 
360 days. Okay, in the Enoch calendar, there's what they call the Takufa. What it is, is it's the four, okay, there's four solar days. You got the two equinoxes, and you got the two solstices, okay. Those, that's four days, okay. So 360 days in a prophetic year, plus those four days is a perfect 364 uh, days. And in that, okay, we know that, that a solar year is 364.2 or whatever, okay, but it's the only calendar that will perfectly, okay, match up. And as it does, okay, it doesn't lose the Sabbaths, all the feasts are on the same day, nothing changes, okay, it's the only calendar that has order. So I encourage you, I'm going to put a, I'll put a link in the description of the video or in the comments, okay, I encourage you to study the Enoch calendar, because it is the right calendar, okay, God has an order, it doesn't change, okay, his time worships God, the more you get into the Enoch calendar, my friends, that's what you're going to see, and it's not just, uh, okay, it's not just Genesis that declares this, okay, as you study the book of Revelation, as you study the book of Esther, as you study the Gospels, you'll see that this is the correct calendar as to the Bible. Okay. But I wanted to also share with you, my friends. Okay. To share what I wanted to share with you, I wanted, I had to tell you about the Enoch. Because I've been observing today. Okay, I guess what it is. It, it's July 23rd. Anyway, it's Saturday. Okay, in the Babylonian. It is the Sabbath. Okay, but in God's time, today is the fifth month. Okay, it's the ninth day. It's the ninth of Av, okay? For anybody that don't know, the ninth of Av just so happens to be the day that both temples were destroyed by Babylonia, okay? And then 600 years later by Rome. Both the temples were destroyed on and around the ninth of Av, which is today, okay? But then Apostle Paul... Okay, I wanted to share this with you because Apostle Paul, my friends, what we got going on out in the world here is we got Christians that keep Easter, they keep Christmas, they can't tell you anything about God's feasts, nor do they know when they actually are, okay, and it's just Babylonian, pagan, false God worship. We know that the calendar was changed, okay, Daniel told us it would be, and it came to pass with Rome, okay, now you're still living in Roman, pagan, Gregorian calendars, okay? But what you'll notice is that your birthday is never on the same day. Your birthday might fall on a Wednesday. It might be on a Saturday. It always changes, and so does Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Ishtar, all of it, okay? It's, it's way out of order, okay? For example, you got the month of September, okay? That's the ninth month in the Gregorian, the calendar that we grew up in. It's the ninth month, okay? The word sept comes from the Latin, okay? It means seven, okay? It's mockery right in your face. It's not the seventh month. September is the ninth month in the Gregorian, but it's named sept, se seven, okay? So it's mockery. It's changed calendar, okay? And in that, everyone's ignorant, and they can't even keep up with God's feasts, Okay? He gave us a correct calendar. He gave us an order. He gave us the feasts, okay, for times to meet up with him and to learn of him, my friends, okay? Now, by keeping these feasts, okay, you don't get no righteousness. It's nothing like that. As for me and my house, what we do is we observe it day by day, learning of it, okay, and that's what we're going to do. Today's the ninth of Av, okay? We're going to study the falling of the temple. We're going to study the fall of the nation and the children of Israel. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, but my friends, we're commanded to keep these feasts. Okay, that's what you'll, if you get out of your own wisdom, get in the Holy Spirit of God and you study this Bible, you'll see that we're commanded to keep these feasts. For example, okay, right here in 1 Corinthians 5, you'll see, okay, that Apostle Paul told us to keep the Passover. Okay, he says, Okay, verse 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may save in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little, a little leaven, okay, leaveneth the whole lump, okay? A little bit of yeast will rise all your bread, okay? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, okay? As you are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us, okay? These guys used to sacrifice the lamb. Okay, we everyone knows the story about, you know, the Passover. Okay. Well, Jesus is our Passover. Okay. They hung him on the cross during Passover. He is our P Passover. Okay, we keep the Passover. It says that completely in uh, verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread. Okay, we don't sacrifice goats. None of that. Okay, you keep it with unleavened bread. With what? Of sincerity of truth, okay? My friends, we're supposed to keep these feasts. Okay, he is the Passover. Okay, I don't think a lot of people understand what that means. Okay, he is your Passover. Death and hell may pass over you because of him, nothing else. Okay, we're supposed to keep this feast. Okay, you'll see that we're supposed to keep and acknowledge these feasts as you study the Bibles. And there's problems, my friends. Christians don't care. They don't know. Okay, they couldn't tell you when the Passover is or anything. Okay, most of them. A lot of them don't even know the Ten Commandments. So I encourage you. I just wanted to make a quick video. I wanted to encourage you to come out of confusion come out of Babylon because when you come out of Babylon you forget that Babylonian calendar and you forget what this world has done okay they've tripped us all up guys they changed the calendar okay they've ha they have us out here worshiping satanic beasts okay with all these pagan worldly holidays and whatnot okay if you actually study the Bible this stuff is clear if you're walking in the spirit amen but I wanted to take just a few minutes and uh you know, talk about this because it's a problem, my friends. It's definitely a problem. You got, listen to this. You got Christians that are keeping Easter. Easter is Ishtar. Okay? This stuff is all solstice, sun god, worship. There's nothing new under the sun. It comes from Babylon, my friends. Okay? It's Roman, Babylonian. Assyrian, all the world has always kept these feasts. There's nothing new under the sun. There's absolutely nothing new under the sun. Okay, the world is deceived. Okay, the prince of this world has come. Okay, and has nothing in Jesus Christ. Has nothing in the things of God. So I wanted to make a quick video. I wanted to encourage you to come out of Babylon. Amen. Start keeping the feasts. Start learning of the feasts. You'll, it's amazing what you'll find out about Jesus once you study these feasts. Okay, especially if you're doing it in correct time. And you can't argue with time, okay? You guys can tell me that this Enoch calendar is false, but when it really comes down to it, you're arguing with creation because no matter what you say, okay, the heavens were created on the fourth day. Okay, the Enoch calendar always starts on the fourth day. Okay, you'll notice if you study it, all the under, all the other calendars are whack. All of them. The Hebrew Jewish calendars whack. The lunar calendars whack. Okay, the Gregorians definitely whack. All of them. Okay, they're out of order. God has an order. There's not 13 months. Okay, there's not 31 days. Okay, there's 12 months, 30 days. Okay, you don't break the order that God has given. Okay, and you stay in what? His time. You stay in Him, His worship. His creation worships Him. Okay, I encourage you. Acknowledge what today is, my friends. It's a day of mourning. It's a day of, you know, weeping. It's a day of fasting. It's a day of prayer. Okay, it's a day that 
you know, Israel fell twice. Okay, so I encourage you to study it at the very least. Okay, anyway, keeping the feasts, my friends. Okay, it ain't about hanging things on the wall and being religious and traditional. It's not about that. Okay, it's about learning of your Messiah. It's about learning of the one that created you. Okay, who bought you with his own blood. Okay, he created this all to worship him. Man is the only thing that don't do it. So I encourage you to do it. Okay, seek him. Learn of him. You're going to see that this creation, all the Bible is correct, my friends. Okay, the book of Enoch is correct, my friends. It's all one. Okay. It's a big wheel all moving together. There's nothing out of order. Okay. So I encourage you to study these things. And especially if you study them in the Greek and the Hebrew. You're going to see that this stuff is amazing. Okay. There's room for revelation my friends. But you got to come out of the world. Everyone's satisfied with keeping Christmas and Easter. Okay. Which is not of God. That's Antichrist. Okay. And they don't want to learn of God. Not only that. Okay. They want to ignore people when I come and tell you this. Okay, that's an antichrist, you guys. You guys want to keep all the world's feasts. You're supposed to be keeping the Passover of the Lamb that bought you. Amen? Come on, guys. It's embarrassing. It's uh, pitiful. Okay, and I was guilty of it, too. Why do you think I've been so upset over the last two years? Okay, telling you, we've been deceived. Come out of Babylon, my friends. Jesus is coming. Okay, knowledge is released. Okay, the revelation is available. So I hope you all have a great Sabbath day today. May you spend it with the Lord and, you know, study with Him and learn of Him. Study to show thyself approved. God's people perish, okay, worshiping other gods, worshiping an Antichrist. God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. Get some knowledge. Wake up. Learn of your Messiah. Learn of the one that created you. And I pray that you do well. In Jesus' name. Later.